is the beginning of the year and it just feels so right to get Orkmares. And one of the things on my to-do list is to sort through our paper filing system. We've all got them, we've got to keep some sort of paper records, and they can just get a little bit out of hand, and so today is the day that I'm going to tackle our filing system, get some of the paperwork that is outdated out of there, and get some of the new stuff that I've been keeping in this little filing box into the files where they belong and get organized. Now there are many ways that you can organize your filing system and paperwork, and so I'm not saying this is the only way, but this is the way that I've done it now, and hopefully this can give you some sort of roadmap to what you could potentially do to organize your filing system. Obviously, if you are here, you have some paperwork to organize as well, and so even if this just serves as a little bit of inspiration for you to get going, I hope this can be helpful to you. Now, I'm fortunate to have this big filing cabinet and it can hold a lot of files, although we live in a small one bedroom apartment on a barn suite and so I actually use a lot of this storage space for other things and so I really only have one drawer in this filing cabinet where I can store paperwork and I used to have a much smaller system so the files that I have in here right now are too small for the actual size of these filing cabinets and so what I've done is just lay them down flat because I haven't had a time to consolidate all the paperwork and get things into new files, discard old paperwork and put them in files that would actually fit into this cabinet. So right now they're just in these big stacks. So I'm going to start by taking them all out of here, taking them to a bigger space where I can lay everything out and basically start making piles of paperwork that I actually want to keep. So the end vision here is to end up with just a few stacks of paperwork that kind of categorically go together. And that way I don't have many files that kind of, you know, require a lot of filing, but I just have a few basic categories and I know I can just slip the papers into these files and if I'm looking for something, it'll be in the general area of that file. I don't need very specific files. I only have about six big folders right now, so that's my goal. So I'm bringing all of the paperwork here to the living room where I can get a big overview on everything that I have and start making piles in a big area and start to sort of minimize what I have and sort out getting a rough idea of what kind of categories I'm working with. So at the beginning here, I don't really know all that I have. I have some vague idea of what's in these filing systems, but there's a lot of stuff here that's surprising me. So I'm just starting piles and kind of putting things together that seem to go together, and I will consolidate that more and more as I go on here. But the biggest thing is that there is a bunch of stuff that is totally outdated. So this is why it's so important to update your filing systems and go through them about once a year because there is stuff that you thought was important a year ago to keep that really isn't that important to keep and you're just holding on to paperwork that is taking up space in your house unnecessarily. And I am making a giant pile of stuff to recycle and get shredded. So that feels really, really good. The other thing I'm noticing is that I have some tax documents here that I no longer need to keep. In Canada, we only need to keep our tax documents for six years. And so I have some old paperwork that I can also now get rid of that is past that six year deadline. So if you have a business, this is something that you know is so important. You've got to keep your tax documents, but you can actually get rid of them after six years. So that's more papers that I can get rid of here today. And it feels so good. Now nap time is over and so I've got a little baby that has now joined me. This is quite a mission, sorting out paperwork with a little one crawling around, but so fun. He seems to be more interested in the recycling papers. So this is good. I'm going to keep motoring on here. So I ended up grabbing our recycling bin because I have so much paperwork to throw out. It's just all over the floor here. So I'm grabbing a recycling bin and just discarding everything right into here. Now I can take this to our local shredding place for the important stuff that's in here that I may not want to go directly to the recycling. But this feels so good. Getting it all in a bin, ready to get going. This is what this day is for. So once I've got everything kind of sorted, I've got the things I'm going to throw away and then I've got a few piles all around me as you can see. Now I can start looking at my piles and consolidating things that can go together. Now how I'm going about this is I'm deciding how I'm going to file this paperwork based on the filing stuff I have right now because I don't want to go buy new stuff because I have stuff already. So I already have these 
large green folders that would fit perfectly into our filing cabinet. Now they were in these smaller green ones, but they don't fit into the filing cabinet. So I'm going to transfer from these little green ones to the bigger green ones. But I only have about eight. And so what I'm thinking is if I want subcategories or subfiles inside of my main files, I'm going to use these other little colorful folders that I can get a little bit more specific so that if someone goes into the main file of, let's say, important documents, under there they can find account information and specific photocopies of documents or old documents like certificates and school records or whatever else. So sub files in my big file. That's the direction that I'm going to go with. Now you can go in whatever direction. There's lots of other alternatives. If you don't have files, you can use envelopes. I have in the past, when I didn't have files, just taken a little piece of paper, folded it over my set of documents, and then covered that with a elastic band, which held all of it together, and then I would just name the little paper on the side. So you can get really creative. You don't need to use files. You don't need to use a filing cabinet. You can just use a random old box, envelopes, or even just a little piece of paper with a paper clip and name the paper. Any way that whoever else ever needs to come and access the files, if they need to find information, they can find it. And also for you, next time you visit your files, you can find things easily. That is the point. So now that I have my rough categories laid out, I am starting to sort of consolidate even more. I have my little subfiles, and so I'm starting to name these subfiles so that I can get the documents into my main folders. So my main folders, I'm just using tags that I already had, folding over the information that was written there and writing some new information and sliding it back into this little plastic tab. These are so handy because if you're looking in your filing cabinet, if you've got one, it's so nice to see a little tag sticking out with the information right there and you can just quickly get right to the file that you're looking for. So this is a nice and clear way of doing it. If you don't have some of these plastic little tags, you could use a little sticky note and write on the tip of that and can help you to easily spot a file that you're looking for. In the past, I've also used old business cards and cut them up because they're a little bit more solid and you can just tape them right to your file and write on the back of them. So that's another way that you can store with your filing systems without having any fancy gadgets. So I've named my subfolders, I'm stacking papers into them, and then I'm putting these subfolders into my main folders, and it's all working really well, it's coming nicely together. So the main six files that I ended up with was personal, business, documents, hunting, fishing, and motors, and a big one for records, which I probably won't access often, but are some records that we just don't want to get rid of. Inside of my motors file, I have some files for each of our vehicles and off-road vehicles. Then I have a hunting and fishing file which is separated into two subcategories of hunting and fishing. Then I have a big file for documents and in there I have two files, one for accounts and one for specific documents. In the personal file I have two subcategories for home and for health. And then the big records file is just one giant file of our old records and then I have a subfolder for my thesis information which I may delve back into in a few months from now so I would like that research kept separately. My biggest two tips are keep a filing box in your house that you can just put information into if you're not ready to file things right away. It's all in one place and you can quickly get it if you need it in a pinch but it's all together for when you are going to spend a day filing stuff away. And then my second tip is to be really tough with what you allow into your house. I have found this really helpful. When I find a piece of paper and I think, should I keep this or should I not keep this? I think about the fact that I need to spend the time to organize it and it's going to take up room in my house. Do I actually want to keep this piece of paper? What is its use? And so being really tough with the paperwork as it's coming in will be really helpful for you to keep your filing system organized and down to a minimum so that you're not just hoarding a bunch of paperwork unnecessarily. Well, thank you so much for joining me as I organize through our paperwork and update my filing system. I know this is gonna be so good for us this year, having just a clean slate to have paperwork going into, especially going into our tax season coming up here in the next few weeks. And so hopefully this has been helpful to you. If you have any other tips or interesting information, please 
feel free to leave us a comment. We'd love to learn from you as well. And if you just want to say hello, that'd be lovely too. Thanks for joining us. And if you like content like this, would you consider subscribing to our channel and catching some of our upcoming content? All right, we'll see you. Bye.